All right, we'll get this <clears throat> public caucus started. Uh, tonight we have um, Mayor Cognetti, uh, OEC Director Eileen Cipriani, uh, Barb O'Malley representing the Recreation Authority, and State Representative Tom Welby. Um, so, Mayor and Eileen, if you guys like to start. Yes, thank you for having us. I know you guys have printouts, and my apologies, I should have flagged the need for a screen sooner so we don't have that up, but I'll do better next time. It, it, you all should have, I think Tom and, and Barb you have, and then at least, do we have any more copies? Um, we'll, we'll walk through these, these options. So before you, you have three different options um, for the NAOG Recreation Complex sketched out by uh, Tom McLean and Associates. Um, and then the other piece of paper that you have is uh, an analysis that includes some add-ons. The focus tonight and uh, I think for the next couple of weeks that we need to, between the Rec Authority, Council, the Administration, and the public, need to, to drill down on what, what option pools, what swim option, pool splash pad option we're looking at. As you can see, the, the add-ons on this other sheet the, there's in a smaller dollar amount and those pieces can be put together a little bit as we go but for the purpose of, of this exercise in the coming weeks we need to really focus in on on the, the the big the big spend which is which is the pool and the splash pad the other pieces that you see on this are funding sources and an, an, an just an estimate of what the maintenance costs would be these maintenance costs um, are not baked into any of these, these other sheets. These are just the one-time costs for the build-out, the maintenance costs we have on there just to give everyone an idea of what we would need to be baking into the general fund budget each year going forward um, to, go, to go through with these plans. So the options that you see are Number one is the, the smallest square footage up to number three, which is the largest. And uh, Mr. Musso's not here uh, yet on the engineering side, but it's very important to note that each of these options, you'll see on the, the drawing that the water slide is there for your point of reference, but the uh, analysis of the engineer is that the water slide should not be incorporated into our future plans. The engineers um, worked it out and, and realized that the, the company that makes the water slide is no longer in business and that we are would pretty rapidly near the end of the useful life of the water slide. So to build this recreational complex around that feature would, would not be cost effective. Okay. So while you see the water slide on your drawings, this is these plans are built out in mind with that water slide coming down and uh, going, going from there. So really the, the key differences are the size of the pool and the size of the splash pad. Um, for a, a bit of reference, option one with the 5,000 square foot pool, that's the size roughly of Weston Park and Weston Fields pools. And option three at 7,000, Connell Park's pool is 6,800 square feet. <clears throat> Just for Mayor, are all of those, uh, all, all the options, they're oval pools? The, this, these, are, these are rough sketches. This, I, don't, I don't think it would necessarily be this precise. I think it was, of a just, shape. To, sorry, I just, it was just to represent the size. Size, right, right. but they're so not. When it's designed, it could be whatever design we want, a rectangle, a square, what, what, what have you. Okay, and the water slide would not be included in any of these options, correct? Right. Okay. That is there just, I think, to orient you to see where things are in the gotcha. space Gotcha, okay, now. so that, that doesn't necessarily represent what the pool would look like. Right. It's just simply got it. It's a size. Thank you. Right. Do you know what the size of the splash pad is at Novembrino, just for reference? It's about 1,600. So, you know, and obviously these, these options, there's interchangeability where you could have a, you know, a 5,000 or a 6,000 square foot pool and decrease the splash pad and we can, we could, you know, play with that a little bit. But, but the, 
the main piece here I think that's important is is the funding mechanism we have you know two million dollars in a grant from land and water um, it's a National Park Service grant um, on this funding sources grid I my proposal would be or my not even a thought would be that we could use two million dollars of the DL, the Department of Labor and Industry funds that came back to the city in 2019. Those are we can use those for whatever purpose we like. Uh, as you see at the bottom of this sheet, it's a total of six million. I would like to use two million of do dollars of that at least for seed funding the OPEB trust. Um, that National Park Service grant requires a match, so I think putting taking two million from DLI as the match uh, is reasonable. Eileen and her team have applied for an LSA. That's in italics because we you know, we don't know whether or not we would get that that LSA or not. Uh, even, let's say we do get the LSA. We're that's five million dollars. We're still about a million dollars short on option one. Um, and so that's a statewide LSA too, correct? The what? A statewide? It's a statewide LSA. Statewide. So even at, even at option one, we're still going to need to figure out a way to close to close a gap there. But you know, I would, and I guess let me, Eileen or Representative or Barb, anything to add up front? The only question I have is uh, just out of time. If we're not having a water slide. Does the pool, is it serviceable for preteens, like up until what age? I know the splash pad is generally for younger children, but I was just wondering what the pool would, would be, uh, what age groups that would accommodate. Um, we're, we're concerned about the activities for, particularly for the preteen, you know, the 13, 14, 15 year old, the, the, the kids who have graduated out of the splash pool but aren't old enough to get in a car and go somewhere else with, with their friends. Um, so we're looking at what is available for them. And I can't, so I can't tell from looking at this if it's 5,000 square feet if that's the size of I think with that being said, I think, is there a shallow end? I know it's a zero entry, but is there a shallow end and a deep end? And what, what is the shallow end? I mean, it starts at zero, but what, what's, so the, it, what's the grade zero. and how deep does it go? I believe um, he measured this to three feet would be the deepest part of the pool, which is, uh, according to Mr. McLean, a standard three depth feet. of a pool. Um, but the zero entry, so it'll just gradually, just like the beach, just continue to get deeper as you go out into the pool. And that is a, an important feature for ADA compliance as well. So three feet's the deepest part of the pool? In this drawing, it doesn't have to be. It, the three feet is what he proposed in this. It could be however deep we want it to be, but it, that does change the cost, of course. I think that also probably changes the age group as well. Um, who's gonna wanna be in the pool and how long they're gonna stay? And, and, you know, I, I understand the ADA piece of it. Um, I'm sure that can be accomplished in multiple ways, too, um, in the design of the pool. But, like, a pool that just has a continuous angle going all the way down, like, in, into the beach, like, I'm just thinking of kids tr jumping in from the side, and it's, I, 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 uh, I don't know. I, 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 it's a wading pool. It's not a traditional... No. Take, you're not going to have to be taking laps in the pool and exercising in the pool. It's going to be more of a wading pool. Well, there will be portions of the pool that are deeper. That would be your... D deeper than three. Than, than three feet? Yeah, but three feet. So, so the pool the minimum is three. has proposed it is three feet at its deepest part. But right. this is a proposal, so it could be four feet, it could be what, whatever we Six, choose. Eight, that right. affects the cost, obviously, of the, the pool. I'd like to see it six to eight feet. I mean, just what Barb had indicated, you know, we're, we have a lot of teenage 12, 13, 14, 15 year old kids that they're not, they're not going to go up there into a pool that's three feet deep and it's, I don't know. I just. I don't know if it. I don't know if it achieves what we're trying to accomplish. For you know, I know. I know we're trying to make everybody happy, but I think that completely eliminates a lot of teenage kids from being able to enjoy the pool. And I'm one 
that walked there from East Mountain and swam at Nayog Pool growing up. Um, so I, I truly realized the value of that. I'm not sure if I could completely yeah. answer that, that question. Um, um, but any changes we make in the depth obviously changes the price per square foot. So, um, you know, just as, as on this document here, we, we do have an estimate what it would cost per square foot. So as we condense it, that cost comes down. We can certainly take back to to the engineers um, that try to figure out that volume, that volume issue, and figure out what um, what would make the most people the most excited. Uh, I think within that, though, the, the biggest question for council is the funding mechanism. Um, what at what level would, at what level do you all want to fund this? and with what funding. So we see grants. With this design, I wouldn't want to fund any of it. I'll be perfectly honest. I think, that, I think the design with the taper down to three feet, I want to waste our money. Um, so I'm proposing that we come back with the new design, then take a look at the numbers. That's just me. I'm only <clears> one of five, but I'm just telling you based on what I've heard. No, I would have to agree as well. Um, when we're taking a look at the splash pad, if the splash pad at Nova Marino is about 1,600 square feet, um, I mean, I would start the splash pad there and look to take maybe some of the costs off the splash pad and, and add that to the pool. Sure. I still need to know where you all would like the additional funding to come from. Well, I have a thought about funding. So um, as of recent, we hear a lot from Geisinger that they want to be good neighbors. Um, and with that in mind, I mean, we've done this in the district where we had uh, sponsors for <coughs> gymnasiums, put their name on it. So why couldn't we reach out to them to say, for 10 years, we'll call it the Geisinger School or the Pool Complex at Nayog. See if they want to partner with us. And, and, you know, over 10 years, what would that be, 500000 or something like that per year to help us? Um, I think that's, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a bad idea to pitch that to them or any other organization that would be willing to help us or partner with us. With, so, um, it's been I, successful in the district with gymnasiums and scoreboards. So I think, you know, if we don't ask, we, 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 we don't know. I understand that, and I think that could work to a point. I think it could definitely work for those add-ons. We're just talking, though, about a, a funding gap of seven figures, of, and I don't. We need to know. We need to know what what our cost, what our what our budget looks like. With you know, I need to. Do, are we looking at six million? Um, I'm personally not comfortable going beyond <coughs> the the six million dollar mark. Um, and even with that, though, I'm not sure that a million dollars in private funding is is a lock. You know, we can certainly try, but that's that's a lot of money, and I'm just not sure I'm not sure that that's that appetite is out there. So the options that you have um, on some of these sheets here, um, and the the cost of them is that's not inclusive of the add-ons. Is that right? Correct. Because. It, yeah, my, it was my understanding with the add-ons that um, those could come later. Uh, what's most important right now is getting the, the water features down uh, because those are going to be the most costly and then we could look for other funding sources for those add-ons. I just want to make sure that I'm clearly understanding that, right? Right. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I do appreciate the different options. Um, it is important to me that we have a pool in addition to a splash pad and that um, with this space that we can, we can capture as many different ages and populations as possible because we want to put our money into something that's going to be utilized by a lot of people and not just a particular 
group or age category. Um, and so I, I would also like to have a, a pool that does have um, an increased depth compared to, to just three feet because I, you know, I don't know if I would use that. Um, so uh, with that being said, I mean, it's hard to make a decision on that without seeing the numbers on, on more of a depth uh, once we're able to, to get that back. Um, and we also haven't done anything for the budget next year just yet. And I know this, the funding would all, if we were to use any of our budget next year or capital uh, towards this, uh, that would be, I think, another conversation because that's not coming out of this year's budget. Council, would, would, it, would it make sense if we picked a maximum funding threshold? Right. Say so it was the 5.6 million. Then went back to Tom McLean and said, "We want the pool to be deeper. We want the splash pad to be small. Whatever we want, and to fit it into that budget, sort of design backwards a little bit." I'd I'd be fine with that, seeing what we could get for for six million or whatever the the numbers that um, that you feel that line is at uh, for. And I would think funding. that the deepest end should probably. I know, I know that it's, it's whatever we're calling it, a, a tapered or waiting pool, but I'd like to see him, and I'm not, like I said, I'm one of five councilmen. I'm just telling you what I would like to see for our kids um, in the city. I'd like to see a flat, deep end um, so that they can swim laps, they can jump in without having to worry about hitting at an angle as they're going and, and it could be clearly designated and they can run those whatever those buoys across the, the one end so that they know exactly where the square you know where the flat bottom of the pool is um, but still tapered to a point you know um, for ADA compliance but um, I just think that that would really reach a lot more a lot more of the, the children in the city um, and, you know, I, I would be in the six and a half to seven million dollar range too. And um, I don't know, you know, if, if you could ask him to go back and just kind of reconsider the design a bit. Um, like I said, there's a lot of ways too to be AD, ADA compliant. It doesn't have to be the entire pool tapering. There could be a section on one side that's wide enough with, um, I've seen, you know, in Puerto Rico before where uh, there's uh, a, like a rail that leads down and it's wide enough so that you can you know, wheel someone into the pool and um, accommodate those needs. Just a thought. Well, I concur with the depth, all right? And, and I'm familiar somewhat where it's like a hopper design where it, it doesn't just drop off, but when I, when I was growing up, I had a pool that was half above, half in ground. Right, and there was there was a four foot area, and then like a hopper, it just went down like this, not straight down, a hopper to seven and a half eight feet, and then there was a little ridge around it, or so you know, you can get out or climb out, but it's 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 not as gradual, but that design, I think you'll be able to jump in it, dive in it, you know, no, it's not going to be like the old pool where with a swim high laps. Dive. I'm sorry, what? Swim laps as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we all concur that we want a deeper pool. And I also, I'm thrilled to see that there's a pool in all three options. Um, that alone I'm happy with. So how we fund it, of course we got it to figure it out. Uh, what design, we need to know what it's going to cost to be deeper before we can make any decisions. But I'm glad there's a pool in each option. That's, that's my biggest, um, that was my concern uh, initially. So. So I'm not sure that going back to the depth, I'm not sure that that really changes the budget question. So we, we have a configuration here with square footage. Obviously the um, engineers can do more, but I, at the end of the day, I've identified 2 million to match the 2 million. That would leave 1.5 million in the workers comp fund left over. So that's a piece. 
if we get the LSA, fantastic. I don't know that we would get the full million, but even if we did, again, that's, that's we're still a million short of a $6 million project. You know, maybe, I, again, I think we can get, do some fundraising, but I don't think that fundraising is gonna reach a seven, uh, seven figures. So, you know, council has the power of the purse. <laughs> what, what, are your, what are your thoughts for how we fill that gap? Let me ask you this, is, <clears throat> is there a need for a 3,000 square foot bathhouse? I am not an expert in that, so yes, yeah, I, we can. Just because it, it does go up in the options, I don't know if that's a requirement. The square footage goes, it, not in the picture, but in the cost, it goes, right. I don't know if that's based off the, you know, I know total from capacity the, or. The MKSD study, they did recommend a larger bathhouse. I don't remember off the top of my head the exact yeah. size they recommend it. So certainly, again, we can, we can I mean, it's all, take you know, it's, down. Yeah, we can, yeah, we can take down the splash pad square footage, we can boost up the depth and the square footage, we can, we can pull all those levers, but that, that funding question is, is still there. I agree, that's, that's a big house around, around here, in a big development, 3,000 square feet. But I don't, you know, I don't know if there was, if there's a need just for more, you know, not only, you know, the actual bathrooms and locker rooms, but also for an office. So I think looking back at the previous designs, that was something that was mentioned. One of the things that was cited is that when there's an inclement weather event, everybody runs for shelter and they're all trying to run into that one little spot. Now, was that identified that that house the current size of that house was too small? That was in the MKSD study. Yeah. And, and what, what's the square footage of the existing one? Do we know? I think it's a lot. Yeah, smaller. I don't know. That. Okay. If the size All of we it know is accurate, it's too small. It, it seems to be about a half or a third of the size if, if this is proportional on his drawings. Okay. Thank you. But, you know, even perhaps to address what you just mentioned, uh, Cipriano, perhaps they can put a couple of small pavilions that would get people out of, you know, without having to go with all these showers and bathrooms and everything. I'm, I'm not saying, certainly not suggesting that there not be a bathhouse, but maybe a way of saying you can, um, you know, uh, reduce the size of the bathhouse, but still address those other concerns that you mentioned if in the event that there was thunder and lightning and you needed to protect people. Is, is the bathhouse also something that could come later? Like, is there an immediate need for us to build a we new have, one? We, we have to have those facilities to open the pool, so. And in order to get to lock in that land and water um, grant, it has to be operational. Mm -hmm. The right yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of the state of the current one that's, that's there. Is that in? That's, it's not in the sh of shape we would want to mm -hmm. utilize it. Okay. Okay. Representative. I, I just uh, uh, also wanted to just to make a comment regarding uh, the availability of money from the state. And, 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 and you know, when I, I took over for Marty in the representative's office, one of my pleasures was to uh, bring more grant money back and focus on more grant money uh, to our area, which, which uh, sometimes we miss out on. And, and uh, I, I speak on behalf of Representative uh, 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 Kyle Mullins and also now Representative Kozarowski, who will be representing uh, a greater part of the city now and, and, and also our, our next uh, representative here that, that will uh, uh, also be moving forward. And Senator Marty Flint also wants to support uh, more grant activity for the city. And, and we have a situation that, that puts you all in a very difficult situation, puts the mayor in a very difficult situation in that the window of time that we have to deal with on a lot of these grant applications. The city was able to successfully submit the statewide LSA grant application for this and another project, and, and, and that was good. But with a lot of these, uh, the, the, the window uh, closes quite rapidly for the amount of paperwork that you need to present. And, and one of the big ones that, that sometimes can be an issue is the engineering studies. And, and you have to spend a lot of money at times for some of the required engineering studies. And I know that it's difficult for you to 
to get to that and, and, and agree to, to do that. Sometimes for not, you spend that money and you don't get the grant. And, and it's, it's a roll of the dice that you, you, you take. And I'm, I'm, for that part, I'm glad to not be in your position to, to suffer the wrath of that. But the reality is if, if, if you want to qualify for grant money, the paperwork has to be in, 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 in time. And, and I can assure you that, that if that is done, myself and your regional representatives, including Mike Carroll, uh, uh, will fight tooth and nail uh, for the grant money. There's some that's up right now with DCNR and, and uh, uh, DCED, some newer money that's becoming available, not to the level of the statewide uh, uh, LSA grant money, but, but it's terrific. And, and, and Councilman McCandra, I love the idea of, of seeking out some support money, some grant money that, that uh, will, will, will be picked up with sponsorships. And, and, and while you can't count on that for right now and the money that you have to show for a different project, but for future maintenance uh, uh, for, for the, all those years of successive uh, maintenance and costs that you have that, that can be, uh, they add up and it's not gonna get any cheaper uh, for that life, lifeguard work and all, all the other things you have to deal with. But that's, that's a great idea for down the road taking care of that annually. But, but from the state's perspective, uh, we will work as hard as we possibly can and then some to assure that you get more than your fair share of grant money. I just ask that uh, you, you bite the bullet sometimes and, and, and go ahead and take the gamble and, and, and spend the money on the engineering report in the hopes that it will be fruitful for you. And I know you probably might not have an answer to this because you're not, you know, construction managers or whatnot. But <laughs> When I'm looking, but just looking at this, it's just confusing because the bigger you get in the pool, the more, you know, plaza area, the more synth synthetic turf, like that also goes up. And I don't, I might be wrong, but I would think you would need less of that the more pool you have. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, tr just looking at this for the first time and looking at the numbers of it where. <clears throat> you know, if the option one on the plaza synthetic turf and lawn um, can be used in option three, right? That's $175,000 a day. I'm, I don't know the answer to this question. My, my guess would be that there's a certain perimeter that you have to keep and that act, that, that would be proportional. Yeah. I'm, but and believe said, me, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a, not an engineer. So yeah, I, I and I'm not either, but <laughs> I would just think the more pool you have, the less... Yeah. Everything yeah, else you probably need so many feet around the pool, so the larger the oval, the larger the surrounding okay. space. Yeah, there might be like a minimum around it, but um, yeah. So, I, I, and I, to Representative Welby's point, I think the sponsorship and the private funding piece, yes, absolutely, I think more plausible for add ons and maintenance pieces as we go forward, and maybe even some of the cost of this startup, but, but we're not gonna get any, we're not going to lock that in before we need to make a decision on what the cap is and, and, and then you know, commit, com get that engineering study going. So I think that's, you know, doesn't have to be something that we, we decide right in this moment, but, and, and I'd like, I think that the REC Authority has their meeting on Thursday at 6 p.m., so I think, um, We'll make sure that we go and take this to the rec authority, talk through it with them. Um, but then, in say, you know, maybe we come back here in, in the next week or two and, and talk through what get, get you some updated numbers with the depth piece, maybe decrease the splash pad uh, footprint, maybe decrease the bathhouse footprint, some of those configurations, see what that number looks like, and then. I'd, you know, I'd say agree, agree to a, a budget, essentially, of what we're, what we're comfortable with. Now, when it comes to the engineering study, I mean, this is something that's going to have to be done no matter what. It, does the cost of the study and the study itself depend on what is being put it's in there? It's a percentage. So if you look at the very last line item on your budget here. Yeah, I see the percentage. It's an estimated. So it, it's, it, it's smart for us to set our budget now because that will help us. Keep so the tight. cost changes, but the study is the same. Well, it, it's more than a study. So it's engineering, design, permitting, and ENS. All of those things need to be accomplished before we can start putting the pool in. 
Um, and before we can apply for the grant in September, we need to have 80% of the engineering design done or we have to skip a year. So September deadline. Right. I think what we all agreed on tonight is we'd, we'd like to see a more traditional pool. What that pool looks like um, can be up to the engineers, but uh, I, I think everybody's willing to decrease the size of the splash pad, possibly look at decreasing the size of the bathhouse, but getting a, a pool that can be used by a wider age group is there a target I should have the uh, Tom McLean look at a number not to exceed a number? A target for what? Say so we, when he's putting you. this together, we want to everything has a proportional cost. So we want to reduce the size of the splash pad or increase the size of the pool. But altogether, when we put all the pieces together, not to exceed six million dollars, or let's say not to exceed six or seven, and then we could take it from there. Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean. For me, I'm in the mid option there, the six to six and a half um, range. But once again, I'm one person, but that, that's where I'd like to see it. Well, we don't need three more options. We just maybe need one now, uh, yeah. an right. amended option. Yeah, and we'll, we'll obviously walk through it with Tom, but I think we'll have the meeting on Thursday and let him know that by Friday we'll have and Eileen, maybe perhaps we can ask them to value engineer some of this already um, before they ever, you know, even begin to, to build it and, and take a look at exactly some of these things that uh, Mr. Donahue had indicated and, and see if there's opportunities within the design to scale back some of the things um, to achieve what we're hoping to achieve pool-wise. Um, whether that, I, I don't know, um, site amenities, whether it's the size of the, the, the turf, um, I, I, I don't know. But they, if it's the bathhouse can be, re, can, can be reduced um, and maybe come up with another. Uh, like sure. Just the engineers know how to do, they, they know the words value engineering, believe me. Right. Yeah, we yeah. could ask him all those questions as long as we sort of have an idea of what he's trying to, what his target is. And then when it comes to the synthetic turf, do we know where the synthetic turf, turf would be? Where it, what? Synthetic turf. I, I think he's talking about in the part in the center. Where is it at? In between the pool. In, be, in between the, the pool and the splash pad, <clears throat> maybe. Right. Okay, yeah, so we'll, we'll take Virtually. the pieces back. We'll have the get that feedback as well, um, and then come back with a, an updated option. Uh, yeah. Can you say that the bathhouse, it has to include changing facilities or just restrooms? I don't know the answer to that question. It does need to include the restrooms, though. I'm just thinking that the distance that people, the distance that people travel, you might be able to, kids might, you know, you put a towel around them, you put them in the car, and you take them home if that, if that was an option. If it, you have to have restrooms. But I, I didn't know how extensive the change, if they were including changing area. And I think somebody mentioned, too, about um, there's a utility room, though, in, in here or for storage of, of items that relate to the pool. Would that be part of the pool house or is that a separate storage? Right. We'll, we'll check that clarification with that with Tom. But one of these buildings has to house the filtration system as well. Yeah. Would that be the utility room? Definitely. That's where that, the filter that is. That's where the electrical hookup is. Right. They need There's bathrooms. If you don't have bathrooms, guess where they're going to go? In the pool. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I'm just having a little we'll fun. Right. I, I, I also think there's, there is a utility room off to the, if you're from the pool looking at the bathhouse, there's a utility room to the right-hand side where I'm sure things are stored in that area. And then that's where also the lifeguards are when they're on and off, coming on and off duty.
Yeah, I mean, right now the bathrooms are being used as a dual changing area, so it's, it's just the men's and women's bathroom being used as the changing area. Um, I mean, when it comes to the add-on, there's a volleyball court that's already there, um, and I think right now we're just looking to um, take care of the pool facility and those grounds. Well, we understand about donations that that's really not firm enough to um, I can see that maybe down the road with some of the what we call the add-ons but um, I think we would want something a little more concrete and build up, build from 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 there um, aware of the maintenance costs and, and some of the other costs but um, I think Thursday night, we'll be looking forward to a little bit more discussion on it uh, uh, and see what people have, have to say. But thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, just for my reference, could you, what was the size of Weston, the Weston yeah. pool again? The Weston pools are each roughly 5,000 and Connell is 6,800. And then when it came, just, just to, to ask about the water slides, do we know what, what year were the slides built again? Mid 2000s, ish, mid late 2007 or 9 is in my head, but I, I wouldn't take that to the bank. So, like three 15 years ago or so. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say more like three or four. Three or four. Okay. And what was the life? Do you know what the lifespan of those were offhand? I, I don't know the lifespan, but the engineers have told us that they're exceeding their <laughs> lifespan now because they're no longer manufactured and. We cannot get parts for them anymore since they're not manufactured. All right. Thank you very much okay. for coming in. This Thank was very you. helpful. Yep. Um, and we'll be back in touch on yep. some of these options. Sounds good. We'll take a two minute break and then we'll come back for our 6 30 meeting.